Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the Instant Pot Duo Nova Pressure Cooker. This is one of the newest models of the Instant Pot. I'll tell you about the different programs, show you how to do the water test, and cook a whole chicken. I'll put up a separate video on the rice function and other recipes. I chose this 8 quart because I've already done reviews of the 3 quart mini and the 6 quart. I'll put a link to those reviews below in case you want to see how much food you can fit in different size Instant Pots. There is another new model which is the Evo Plus and I will be reviewing that soon. If you want to get a notification when I upload that video, subscribe, click on the bell icon and select all. This model comes in four sizes, 3 quart mini, 6 quart, 8 quart and 10 quart. What I have here is the 8 quart. It's pretty big as you can see, it weighs 15.6 pounds, measures 14.8 inches across, 14 inches tall, and 13.6 inches from front to back. It's 1200 watts. The cord length is 30 inches. Included is a user manual, safety, maintenance, and warranty book, and a cooking timetable with the ingredient, quantity, time, and function to use, a steam rack, and two silicone ceiling rings, this orange one, and a clear one underneath the lid. The cooker base has a control panel. There are 14 smart programs, soup broth, meat stew, bean chili, poultry, slow cook, saute, rice, multigrain, porridge, steam, yogurt, and pressure cook. Pressure cook is the manual setting. You can adjust your time using the minus or plus buttons. And you can also choose the pressure by pressing the pressure level. You have low or high. Let's say you choose the soup setting. The default time is 30 minutes and the pressure level is high. You can change the time using the minus or plus buttons and you can also change the pressure level. Saute is using the unit like a regular pan on the stove. For example, saute onions, garlic, etc. before you add your liquids and move on to pressure cooking. If you choose saute, you'll see you have a maximum of 30 minutes and there's less, normal or more depending on how hot you want it. There are three settings with each program. For example, with poultry, less would be a soft texture, normal is very soft, and more is fall off the bone. The keep warm button. After every program cycle ends, the unit automatically goes into keep warm mode, except for the saute and yogurt programs. If you want to turn that off, just press it after you choose a program. There's a delay start button. You can put ingredients in the pot, close the lid, and set the unit to cook up to 24 hours in advance. You can also turn the sound on and off by pressing the plus key until S on is displayed or the minus key until the S off is displayed. Anytime you want to stop a program, press the cancel button. Remember, even if you cancel, all the pressure has to be released and the float valve has to drop down before you open the lid. The chart in the user manual gives you detailed info on what ingredients to use with each function. These are the cooker handles. You'll definitely need them as this is very heavy to move around. There's a nice sturdy handle on top of the lid. Just turn it and pull up. You'll hear that jingle when you open and close the lid. But just turn it to lock. On the base there's an arrow for lock and an arrow for unlock. Match that arrow to the arrow on the lid when you're closing or opening the lid. This is the inner pot. It's stainless steel and holds eight quarts. Everything you cook has to go into this pot and the pot has to go into the base. The inner pot has a max line marked that's two thirds full. Don't fill above that. There's a half line marked here. Don't fill above that for foods like oatmeal and split peas because there could be a lot of foam and froth that can clog the pipe and valve. Also foods that expand during cooking. Make sure the bottom and outside of the pot is always dry before you put it into the base. The heating element is inside and you don't want to get that wet. This is the condensation collector. It goes in the back of the unit. Just push it against this tab. There might be some water in here after cooking, so empty it and clean it after each use. The cord is not detachable from the base. The three quart and six quart have a detachable cord. On the top of the lid, there's the steam release valve, float valve, and the quick release button. After the unit is finished cooking, you have to release pressure before opening the lid. 
There are two ways to do that. Natural release, which means you turn the unit off and leave it alone and wait for the float valve to drop down. This method takes longer, but you have to use it when cooking things like soups, stews, beans, and grains. Second method is quick release. After cooking is finished, press the quick release button down until it clicks. Steam will be released and the float valve will drop down quickly. Then you can open the lid. Flick it up because it has to be in the sealed position while you're cooking. The float valve and the silicone cap underneath should be cleaned after each use. It just pulls right off and just push it in when you're ready to use the cooker. It's supposed to be loose. On the bottom of the lid, there's the float valve silicone cap and the anti-block shield. Pull both of them off after each use and clean. That's the locking pin, the ceiling ring, which goes along the ceiling ring rack. The ceiling ring always has to be on when you're using the pressure cooker. Remember when you remove all these parts for cleaning, you have to dry them and put them back. Again, there are two ceiling rings included. The rings tend to absorb the smell of whatever you're cooking. So it is best to use one for sweet dishes and one for savory dishes. Depending on what you're cooking, the ceiling ring can get discolored over time. To get rid of odors from the ceiling ring, add a cup of water and a cup of vinegar to the pot and press pressure cook and burn it for five to 10 minutes. Don't store the ceiling rings inside the cooker with the lid closed because they do need to air out. Except for the cooker base, all the other parts are dishwasher safe on the top rack. Of course, you can hand wash them with warm soapy water. Just make sure you dry everything before putting it back in the unit. The base can be wiped down with a damp cloth. Before using the Instant Pot for the first time, you have to do a water test. Plug in the cooker, take the lid off, make sure the inner pot is in, pour in three cups of water, 24 ounces. Put the lid on and lock it. Press pressure cook. Set the time to five minutes. After 10 seconds, on will be displayed. It'll start heating and the float valve will come up when the unit's pressurized. Then the cooking time of five minutes is gonna be displayed and the time will count down. After eight minutes, the float valve popped up. The display shows five minutes and it's gonna start counting down. Don't forget to hit cancel or it will go into keep warm mode. Cycles ended, now we can release pressure and open the lid. From start to finish, the water test took 13 minutes. Press down the quick release button. You saw the steam shoot out. When that's finished, the float valve will drop down. Now we can open the lid. The most important thing to remember when using this pressure cooker is that all the pressure inside has to be released, the float valve has to drop down, and then it's safe to open the lid. Be careful when you open the lid. There's a lot of steam. You don't want to put your face over it. Discard the water and then you can start cooking. You only have to do this water test once when you first get the unit. Now I'll use the poultry function to cook a whole chicken. The chicken that's cooked from the Instant Pot is not gonna have any color on it. It's gonna look bland, so don't expect it to look like some of the thumbnails from YouTube or online where the chicken looks perfectly golden brown and roasted like it does in the oven. It's not gonna look like that. Basically, if you want your chicken to look golden after it's finished cooking in the Instant Pot, you have to put it under the broiler in your regular oven. Or you can use the saute function with a little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan and sear the chicken on all sides before you actually pressure cook the chicken. But that can get a little messy. Sometimes the skin can stick to the pot because it's stainless steel. It's not non-stick. So I prefer just to cook the chicken in the Ainsen pot. It avoids the mess and it's just a lot easier. So you're gonna have to sacrifice the crispy skin when pressure cooking your chicken but it will taste very juicy and delicious. I've got the inner pot in the base. Just for a bit of flavor, I'm gonna put some herbs on the bottom. Some thyme, parsley, half a yellow onion sliced, five whole peeled garlic cloves, 
Now I'll pour in two cups of water, 16 ounces. In this eight quart size, two cups is the minimum amount of liquid you need. Use the rack and put the chicken on the rack. This chicken is four and three quarter pounds. You could fit a five pound chicken in here. I'm gonna squeeze some lemon juice top of the chicken and just leave the rind in. I'm just gonna wash my hands then we'll put the lid on. I used water for the liquid. You can definitely use chicken broth instead. Put some salt over the chicken. Ground black pepper. You can add all different spices, paprika, cumin, coriander, whatever you'd like. Lock the lid. When you close the lid, the quick release button will automatically be up so you don't have to remember to flick it up. Choose poultry. Pressure is already high. If it's not, select high. And I'm gonna set the time to 25 minutes. After a few seconds on is displayed, the unit will come up to pressure and then the time will count down. When cooking pretty much anything, you can use the pressure cook button, which is also the manual button. So you can set your own pressure and the time. And I left the setting as normal. That should give the chicken a very soft texture. Float valve has come up, so the unit is pressurized. 25 minutes is displayed and now it's gonna count down. So it took about 11 minutes for the unit to be pressurized. Press the cancel button or it's gonna go into keep warm mode and we don't want that. I'll wait 15 minutes and then release the pressure. My timer for 15 minutes is up. Now I can release the pressure. Just press down the button. Float valve dropped down, now we can open the lid. You see there was very little pressure left because we had left it alone for 15 minutes. See all the flavorful liquid on the bottom? You could strain it, make it into a gravy, or use it as stock when you make rice or a stew. Temperature is above 180, the chicken is cooked. Cover the chicken with foil, leave it alone for about 10 minutes and then we can cut into it. It's been 10 minutes, now we can cut into the chicken. The wing has just completely fallen off so you know the chicken's cooked. Use the handles of uh, two wooden spoons, it just makes it easier to get the chicken out. That's a juicy chicken. really moist and juicy. The meat just comes right off. The meat is cooked nicely, it's soft. I don't know if the camera will make this look pink or not cooked, but it's not. It's just a thigh and the thigh meat is dark, so that's why it looks like this color, but you can see it's perfectly cooked. The skin's not crispy, but it is very tasty. The breast meat is so juicy, I can't even believe how juicy it is. And it's so flavorful. I used only salt and pepper as the seasonings, but I'm sure the lemon juice helped a lot too. So don't skip the lemon juice. To cook this four and three quarter pound whole chicken, it took a total of 51 minutes. That includes the time it took to come up to full pressure, the 25 minute cooking time, and the 15 minute natural release time. Since this meat is not completely falling apart, it's really nice to eat it just as you would a roast chicken. And if you have leftovers, while the chicken is still warm, take the meat off the bone, let it come to room temperature and refrigerate it. I love to use that meat for tacos, chicken salad, and pasta salad. 
I'm going to strain the liquid, let it cool to room temperature, and then refrigerate it. Tomorrow I can easily remove the fat off the top and use it in any recipe. It's a little bit lemony, it's really delicious. You can use this liquid instead of water to cook rice. Your rice will be really flavorful. Also in soups and stews. You can make this into a really good gravy. Just mix cornstarch and cold water to make a slurry. Add that to this liquid, put this back in the Instant Pot or a pot over the stove and just boil it for one or two minutes so the raw taste of the cornstarch cooks out. Then you'll have the perfect gravy to pour over the chicken. Now that the chicken needs gravy, it's so juicy and flavorful. The big difference in this new model is the pressure release button. Instead of the old one where you turn it with anything other than your hand, all you do with this one is press it down. Also, whenever you close the lid, it automatically seals the pressure valve. With the old model, you had to manually turn it to sealing before you turn the unit on, and it is easy to forget. If you forgot it, the cooker would never pressurize. You also get two sealing rings instead of one. These do wear out over time, so it's nice to have two. The six quart model is the most popular and most of the recipes at Instant Pot's websites are for the six quart. You won't see many recipes for this eight quart, but all you have to remember is to use at least two cups of liquid in this eight quart. You can use any recipe, just increase the ingredients. The cooking time is the same whether you're using a three quart, six quart, or eight quart. It doesn't matter if you're cooking two potatoes or eight potatoes, They'll cook in pretty much the same time in any size Instant Pot. However, the amount of time it takes to come up to pressure will be longer in the larger size Instant Pots, and it will take longer to release the pressure. This size is great for those of you with large families and for weekly meal prep. The most important thing when it comes to buying a pressure cooker is to buy the right size for you. I'll put up a separate video on the Instant Pot rice function. When I do that, I will put a link to that right below this video.